Okay, so uh, we have wave equation. We had wave equation, actually two of them. Uh, So uh, there are wave equation. Okay, wave equation looks like some double derivative is proportional to some double derivative. Always like that. Sorry, some position, some displacement in perpendicular direction. These are. Probably description for a transverse wave, and you have some kind of multiplication factor here, right? And this V could be uh, square root T or mu for strings, it could be square root of bulk modulus over rho, that's for sound, and it could be for a solid wave, it could be square root of Young modulus over rho. Um, hopefully you have seen some of these before and you have uh, you can recognize some of them okay many formulas uh, it would seem overwhelming sometimes uh, but at the end of the day if you try to understand the whole thing hopefully uh, it, it becomes smoother um, you don't have to you know, force yourself into uh, trying to memorize every single thing. This is not biology, okay? In biology, in history, you just memorize it. Maybe some of the facts could be related, some, right? But in physics, mathematics, um, there could be a whole story of things that are related. So you have to find those relationships. Okay, suppose you have one thing, you have two, you have three, right? In biology, you have three things, but in physics, you could have one and two together, two and three, one and three, and maybe some other things, right? So the connection are three of them. You have memories, you have facts, and you have connections, okay? It's a, a little bit different from other branch, uh, other branches of, of science, okay? So you, have, you need to know these connections as well. Uh, not only the facts, but the connections as well. The connections will uh, give it more values. If you have a lot of connection, that means those formulas, or those facts are very important. Hopefully that's... Um, that's something that um, you could apply to some other things like you have very important things in life right the important the most important thing in life uh, I, I don't know what uh, what is for your was for yourself for myself that could be a hell of different things but uh, anyway you have some important things and that particular important things that those particular things, they are going to be related to many things. That's why it's important. Okay, so that's, that's why the connection that you have to, to make. Uh, but in real life, uh, if you have important things, you have to, to be able to, to achieve in, uh, in improving it, maybe sometimes, right? The most important thing for students, university students is is learning it's uh, to better yourself and right? that's the more, most important thing doesn't matter how hard it could be doesn't matter well of course it's, it doesn't have to be very harmful to your health it, it could be uh, a lot of work but um, still you are strong you're young so you can do some of that right you, you have to pay attention to see what uh, this formula, those formulas, just like in real life, you have to pay attention to the, the most important things, okay? The most important people in your life and, and so on. Hopefully, you uh, plan it right. Otherwise, uh, those, some of those may, may be gone, may be away from your life, who knows, right? 
just uh, in physics as well if you pay attention you know what's important you could learn to to do well on the exam hopefully anyway uh, it turns out you can have many solution like y1 like y2 as a function of x and t right and we know that we could split these things right for example if you plug this in here that would mean that 1 over v square of the sum would be the solution as well you can add you can subtract still you're gonna get the solution to the same equation That's the key. So that means that um, those waves could be running around. They could combine sometimes, but in nature, they just superpose. They are going on top of one another. They don't mix. Well, it turns out to be true. In real life, uh, there is nothing more to say. It's just true. That's it okay they don't interfere like like the way um, if you are talking a lot and talking up here as well we interfere with one another if I talk too loud uh, you probably get annoyed and talk even louder these are interference in real life but for wave they interfere somehow they combine and then they split they went there they go their own separate ways that's the way it happens so you can see two waves coming and finally uh, combine getting bigger and then split up or you can have this one on top and one on in the bottom it turns out mathematically true that uh, you could add or subtract them. Wow, it's like subtract, right? Because this is negative. So it's like y1 minus something, right? They combine extremely. They are on top of one another and then they split up. Without changing anything, this is a very good thing. If uh, I'm talking on the phone, you are talking on the phone, our signal, they don't interact. They just pass by right for for if you go uh, you know to the sea you probably see wave again yeah? they they coming crashing into one another actually they are not crashing sometimes some some of them they they crash it they crash a lot some sometimes but not always some of them will go right go against one another in opposite direction and then they split up at the end very peaceful way of, of living together it doesn't happen in human society we we um, do things and the people somewhere else they feel this is not a wave uh, you know the, it's humanity it doesn't have wave equation not not now anyway I'm not sure what's gonna happen at the end but um, not now anyway um, so that's the key they come they go on top of one another and then they split okay and it's mathematically true as well right so so this is the way uh, this is the way the way you you can you can see it uh, from mathematical point of view but the point is the following um, in nature you cannot force particular wave you cannot um, you know I want to generate some some spec some specification of wave I don't want this wave I want only that wave I cannot do that in real life it's hard to to force it right um, in in real life that means if you don't do it uh, you know if you don't cheat it if you do it uh, with common ways of doing things like if I want to generate water wave I just uh, take my hand and smash it uh, into water somehow and we're gonna get some wave and those wave we cannot control 
Um, we we can to some degree, but not have a we don't we do not have a total control. For example, I cannot generate wave that looks like uh, rabbits running or something like that. is 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 difficult. It's po probably possible, uh, given some attention, but um, not easy. Okay, so uh, we cannot control the mixture. But we can control the few a few things. Okay, there are situations where you have uh, some um, physical conditions that uh, force the wave to be such and such. In those situations, uh, uh, there can be some interesting things. Okay, which uh, we're gonna talk about right away. Um. A anyway. Uh, for sound wave, uh, before we go there, uh, for sound wave, you can have two waves, right? You can move this up and down, right? By moving this, the path length changes, and it turns out the people who is hearing it at the other end will feel, will hear different sound. If you move it up and down, the sound will change in terms of how loud it could be. There are some situations where it's completely uh, silent as well. Assuming that uh, you have uh, a special um, generator here. If you have sound in general, you probably don't, don't hear the difference that much. Like in, in, uh, in like, dark pop or something you go dancing people kind of you know turn up music quite a lot those music they are pretty much independent of one another so uh, the sound they combine but in not they don't combine in in ways that give you significant change in patterns, we don't care about that. We're gonna use like, uh, like a sound that is of uh, a single frequency, only one frequency. You cannot use random frequency. It's um, it uh, doesn't work, and it has. Uh, they have to shake in a uniform fashion, so I use a single frequency. With single frequency, there are situations where you hear um, some loud, sometimes loud, sometimes silent, sometimes in between. Okay, so you hear some of that. It depends on where um, the tube is at which uh, pretty much could mean uh, the path difference it turns out if the path diff we call it path difference that's the difference in the length of the path the path diff is in lambda we get loud noise it's loud, sorry, without an N, of course. It's loud when it's N plus a half lambda. It's silent. Or maybe a little bit um, dim in nature. Not so loud. Uh, we cannot tell exactly. There are situations where the, the sound in this direction and this direction they differ a little bit in amplitude so we don't see complete silence okay so just a little bit of variation but uh, nothing to worry about okay so so you have the concept of um, interference the concept of superposition and and so on we, we call superposition in terms of mathematics um, we could call it interference in terms that in, in terms of 
there are two waves, two trains of wave that um, came, that come together and then they don't behave like they used to do before. Okay, so you get this kind of thing. All right, it's true. If you cannot uh, figure out why it's loud or not loud, you could look at some of this. And the only thing we can do this is uh, because we have the same path plane. Uh, we have the same lambda, so we can we can write it in terms of path plane. Actually, the condition is like the phase angle. This is the difference in phase angle. Okay, which is uh, accidentally equal to 2 pi over lambda times r, r2 minus 2 pi over lambda times r1. And if this is equal to 2 n pi, it's going to lead you to this condition up top. And we're going to call it um, constructive interference. If you do something constructive, it's good. It's good for everyone. Constructive interference. This is called destructive interference. Okay. Just a, an abbreviation. This is for sine wave. We're gonna pay. Uh, we're gonna pay attention particularly to uh, sinusoidal wave because they are simple and they are representative of uh, real waves in general. The wave in nature. Suppose we start with um, some kind of sinusoidal wave like this. Let's uh, imagine it's in one direction. So you don't have to care about vector direction and so on. You have only one single direction. So you add them up like this. The amplitude outside is gone to the front. You have the sum of sine, right? With the sum of sine, you could, using trigonometric identities, you can get something like this. And then you have this. What does it mean that you have the same wave a little bit of phase shift. This same wave, uh, new amplitude. So you are expecting, you can expect to see wave of similar shape, but different in amplitude. We're gonna finish up wave uh, right now, and then we're gonna move on to thermodynamics, our last uh, topic, big topic. We're gonna pay a, a visit to thermodynamics. We're gonna talk about heat, about temperature, uh, some laws of thermodynamics and so on. You have to integrate a little bit, learn about engine and so on. We, we're gonna have to do that in three weeks okay too bad but that's the way it is so it's up to you it could be fun but it could be boring as well <laughs> but um, if you don't get too bored you can do well on the exam and get a little bit bored and then have some fun too you, you can have both you can have fun sometime you can get bored at the same time. You could come back and forth. Sometimes you, you're, you're fun. Sometimes you stop smiling, um, get sad a little bit. That, that happens, but you have to get through it, okay? Um, first problem, second problem, third problem. By the end of the 20th problem, you probably uh, have fun doing it already, hopefully. And um, it's pretty good preparation for final exam, which is coming up, right, pretty soon.
Oh, since we have uh, so many applications of mechanics um, in the final exam, sometimes uh, soon did not realize what they are looking at. For example, you can have some problem from one chapter. Uh, this the student could think that. Um, it came from a different chapter and write down different formula for it. Like if you have V, right? Some student goes like this, V, what, what is V, right? Velocity, so it's like U plus AT. In, in final exam, there is no kinematics anymore, right? So V could be square root T over mu, could be square root of B over rho, could be what? Can you remember, you know, some other things like what? 331.5 three, plus 0.61 T or something like this. There are many of them, right? That looks pretty much the same. Same we. But what happened if you don't know the connections or you don't know what you're, you're memorizing? You're going to end up using this formula in the problem that um, you probably better off using this formula. Because in that formula, we didn't talk about um, wave, we talk about some other thing, right? This is a velocity of wave, of, of sound wave, depending on temperature. If you are given some kind of modulus, you shouldn't use this, this formula and so on and so forth, okay? There are gonna be some difficult situation that uh, you need to get through before the final week. Uh, well, before the exam week anyway, which could be um, one week or two weeks after our final week, okay? So it's sad, but you have to do it. Um, all right? Um, oh! I, I, I actually drove a lot. There are times that I, I drove all the way to, uh, you know, I, I, I went to like um, some province in, in the northeast and then I go up north, go to Chiang Mai, stop, and then I go back to Bangkok. The whole trip is like I don't know, it's like uh, 1,700 kilometers, something like that. It, it took many days for me. I, I stop and do, do things, do my business and stuff. Um, I, I, could, I could get past that, right? I did that before. Uh, didn't feel so well, very tired uh, too. Um, at the beginning of this year, like uh, in April, in, in uh, the beginning of, of May, I, I went all the way down to, to Hat Yai, okay? I, I drove alone, actually. It's like many, many kilometers away from, from here. So, um, it, was, it was painful. I almost fell asleep many times. I couldn't imagine some people actually enjoy, there are some people in the world, many of them, they enjoy driving, right? It's something that I cannot imagine, like, like I cannot imagine for yourself not, not loving physics because I love it. Well, not like I love girls, I, I probably love girls a little bit more. Uh, physics is like second best or, or third. Physics, mathematics, and so on. Uh, but I, ca I cannot imagine someone not liking it. But it happened, right? So there are many things that you cannot uh, expect. But for students, you shouldn't think that hard. If you are learning something, try not to dislike it so much. If you dislike it a lot, you hate it is going to hurt you in the exam. 
That's that's all. Just keep an open mind. There are many things that people do. They jump from a high place with uh, some rope, not very strong, tied to their legs, and uh, they're not even sure how long those ropes are. Uh, Sometimes they they turn out to be too long, right? So what happened next, you know, right? You dive all the way from the cliff or something, you're gonna hit the ground with very high velocity. You're gonna die. But many people, they do it. They do it every day, like jump from very high place and then let the, the parachute uh, do the rest. Sometimes uh, they don't open, right? People do it. So, so why not physics? Why not uh, just enjoy your moment? I don't know, it's just, you know, like, um, I, I drove, I, I start out at 3 a.m. in the morning when I went down to, to Hat Yai. I got there like 6 p.m. Uh, I slept like one hour or half an hour in between because I, I couldn't take it. I, I couldn't take it anymore, so I have to stop, uh, rest a little bit, you know. Uh, along the way, I, I do a lot of, I did a lot of stops, stuff, but uh, it was like, how many hours? It was like 15 hours, but I got to do it, because that's the only way I could get there, so I, I did it. Uh, do I want to do it again? No, not really. It was annoying, you have to... You have to punch, you know, to to punch down the keep the gas panel push all the way. You have to brake sometimes. You want to go very fast, otherwise you get there, you know, like too dark to drive, and so on. There are a lot of obstacles along the way. So that's like everything in life is like that. So just just keep doing it. It doesn't. Well, but if you don't like it, don't do it too, too often. Like if you don't like this subject, if you don't like general physics, do not fail it. If you fail it, you have to do it again, okay? If you don't like someone, you don't see them, right? If you don't like physics, please pass it. Just get a, a D or a, a C or A, whatever and pass it well, okay, and go through it, not to uh, fail it, get an F, and then, well, what about next semester, and so on, that's uh, silly, just stupid, okay, you don't do that, uh, people do it, but I don't know why, uh, I, I don't see why not, you just sit and uh, learn something, okay, you just learn about, you know, how interference works, by looking in mathematics. Oh, I'm just saying that uh, there are many formulas that uh, you have to get used to. You have to, to get to know a little bit more than just face value. You don't memorize formula without knowing how to use them. Okay, please do that. Okay, uh, you have two trains of wave. Uh, you can have uh, like this is in phase. Why? Because the top part is aligned, the bottom part is aligned, top part is aligned, and so on. We are talking about sinusoidal wave, so they are constructively interfering. Okay? If you have something like this, it's destructive. Everywhere I go, the other guy will do the opposite thing. So we are going to be cancelling one another. So it's a bad thing, so we call it destructive. It, it doesn't mean it's going to hurt anyone, but uh, it's just flat. There's nothing in between. You can have intermediate result, the combination between the two, it could happen, okay? Depending on this term, all right? Okay, some example, very nice one. Um, you have loudspeakers, identical ones, 
um, they generate sound we want to hear it here okay I, I know it's hard to understand how wave along this direction and this direction they are not parallel how do they combine in here without looking at the vector the reason it just is a pressure wave pressure could combine like I lose some money the other guy gain some money if we live in the same house well we could pretty much uh, gain or lose nothing combined right so we can talk about pressure without direction all right anyway just do it you just learn how to subtract the path and see how far like our one here you have a uh, you have a an angle here 90 degrees right so you have a right triangle you use Pythagorean theorem and you have the same here Right, so you can calculate R1 and R2 and then you subtract them and see what happened okay so this is how you do it you calculate R1 and R2 the difference is this okay but this is equal to lambda over 2 because it's minimum the next one is 3 lambda over 2 5 lambda over 2 is the next this is the first one, the smallest one. Okay, so it becomes um, you get lambda, and with that lambda, the speed of sound in the air is three four three at twenty five degrees or something. This is not at zero degrees. The other one, the formula I just discussed, uh, three three one point five. That's um, at zero degrees Celsius. Anyway, V over lambda is frequency. So we finished. You have to be able to relate one situation to a to a knowledge that uh, you are already familiar with. Okay, that's the point. Uh, what else? You can combine them and get a standing wave. Oh, what happened here? You see here? You have phase difference, right? And you combine them. Um, there are some situations where you don't have the phase difference. That's okay too. But now is moving in opposite direction. This one is moving in the positive x direction. This one is moving in the negative x direction. No phase difference, but there is um, a difference in terms of propagation direction. <coughs> so you get uh, something like this. that and using trigonometry again you get very interesting result like this which mathematically means that uh, it's not uh, traveling not a traveling wave and I'm gonna tell you why It's not a traveling wave because there are places where this is always the same. Okay? Because at some point sine kx is zero at many place. Always therefore it's fixed if it's moving the points where sine kx is zero must be moving right but it doesn't move if it doesn't move that means 
you're not going anywhere. If you go anywhere, you have to go the whole package. Not some of you, you have to go the whole way. Every place has to be able to move, but now some place where this is zero, you get zero always, right? When you get zero always, that means um, too bad the wave is not, is not going to move anywhere. The, the idea is not hard, it's, it's simple, it's a lot better than doing many things in life. Okay, but um, you got to do it. Actually, if you uh, if you talk about minimum wage, uh, minimum wage right right now is like right four hundred bahts a day, right? You work eight hours, so one hour is fifty bahts, right? One hour fifty minimum. Okay. But in the U.S., a uh, long, long time ago, I worked in some place, my part-time job. It pays like $12 an hour. $12 an hour in one hour in the U.S., it means one day here, one day of work here. So what you are doing right now is this. Um, you can spend time studying some of this, right, and hopefully you can uh, ace the exam, the final exam, hopefully, let's, let's just um, say it's um, my compliment to you. Let's hope that uh, you ace the exam, all of you. Um, of course, it's, it's not going to happen for all of you, but hopefully many of you will ace the exam. If you ace the exam, you do it again in many subjects, you probably end up uh, getting, I don't know, some honors from this university, right? And with that, you go to work. You get some, to do some, something big, and you're gonna get paid quite a lot. Maybe in one day, you get like 3,000 bucks or something, or even more, right? So. What happened then? That means that what you're doing now is actually could worth a lot in terms of chance, opportunity. So if you do nothing right now, um, you're probably going to end up getting 50 bars an hour somewhere. Or maybe you are hoping to get uh, always uh, ask for money from your parents. Uh, too bad they are not uh, gonna. They're not gonna live forever. No one lives forever. Not yet, anyway. So someday you're gonna have to do it. But at uh, on that day, it's probably too late. So it's not a bad investment. I think it's pretty good. Pretty good investment. Okay, let's hope better. You're gonna get scholarship to the U.S. Maybe today to England uh, to study engineering, let's say. Uh, scholarship from Thailand, they pay, you, you know how much? How much they pay? Uh, a year, they, you're gonna get like a million also a, a year. A million bars a year. So let's, let's assume you work hard for four years. Let's say four, in four years you study, you do everything in a thousand days. A thousand days is not too bad, you get a lot of rest. A thousand days, you do all that, you get a million, a million bars of scholarship a year just by studying for only a thousand days. And it's going to keep on going because once you finish with the scholarship, you get your master, you get your PhD, you're going to earn more money. So what's bad about that? I, I don't quite see it. You know, it just is something that, um, like myself, I got scholarship, I got stuff. I, the government probably paid me like 15 million baht or something for my education, which is sad because I'm only talking to only a few of you. Some of you are sleeping. Some of you are not 
paying attention at all. Many of you are outside this class. So it's too bad I have only a year, uh, uh, 10 years left, okay? I have to go somewhere, right? Uh, I have to retire myself and so on. So, so it's, it's too bad because they have already given me so much, but um, <laughs> I cannot. Well, along, along with uh, that line of argument, uh, they give you scholarship and you keep working in university and so on and so forth. You still get your own money, you get your own salary as well. So you have both ways. So it's, uh, it's, it's worth it. I, I think it's worth it. it. It's worth the effort, at least. If you cannot do it, at least you realize you cannot do it. So that's one thing you know for sure. That's not too bad. Anyway, just think about it. There, there are not uh, many op opportunities around you, okay? You have to grasp it. You have to capture it. Hopefully, it could belong to you someday, hopefully. All right? It's not that, uh, it's not that hard right now. But it's going to get harder. But at that time, by that time, you probably will become stronger. Strong enough to deal with it. Okay? Just to think about little things and then, you know, uh, in the final you can, you can learn to do well very soon. Anyway, we can talk about sound wave instead of uh, um, standing wave or, or string. Uh, you can talk about sound wave, they combine, you get like, okay, these are adding up to big ones, you get antinodes, 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 and then this comes to zero, you get nodes and nodes and so on. Uh, after some time passes, uh, both of them will move so that you get something like this. These cancel, and it turns out this point is actually the same as this point. It will remain constant. It will remain zero. And this point here, you get cancellation, is the same as this point here. You can guess, right? You can compare left picture and right picture. And when the time passes, half of the period, everything will be flipped. The maximum will become minimum, minimum become maximum, the zero become zero. Same. This is a uh, time development of the wave. It changes with time. We don't have the sense to understand different times for the same person it is it, hard to imagine this uh, at least for myself anyway there's some probably some people who could understand it in four dimension basically okay I, I cannot understand it's like a show it's like a television it uh, it moves from here to here and to here so to see the, he the whole picture that looks like this is like mixed picture of many oscillations. What remains is the nodes, the same, anti-nodes, the same place. But think about this, the anti-node you see here is going to vibrate, it's going to keep up and down, but the nodes will be fixed, fixed and fixed. The anti-node is a possible maximum. But it will not always be maximum or minimum. It will be the possible place for minimum and maximum. Okay, but at nodes, there is no possibility of getting bigger than that. It's flat. Okay. It's like when you're smart, you could get zero on the final exam, or you could get full credit for the final exam. But if you're stupid, or not prepare, you are unprepared, extremely unprepared, you don't study anything. You have no capacity to get any point, that's the notes. Notes is bad, anti-notes is promising. 
is more promising than other things. Okay, but it doesn't need to be maximum, but it can be maximum. Oh, the distance between anti nodes or nodes are lambda over 2. The distance between node and anti node is lambda over 4. Just keep that in mind. Not, it's not too hard. You can see here, right? This is node, this is anti node, anti node, this is lambda over 2. This is node and node. This is lambda over 2 as well. This is anti node and node, this is lambda over 4. There are a lot of symmetries. With those symmetries, you can guess which one is which. It's not going to be lambda over 4 and 3 lambda over 4. It's going to be lambda over 2 and lambda over 2 because of symmetry. Okay, let's see what happens when you have uh, something blocking the way. You have fixed N. Like that, you have incident pulse here. The incidence pulse hits the wall and then get reflected. How do we understand this? Okay, we're gonna try to understand it from some mathematical point of view. Um, let's assume the incident wave is Y incident. Um, this wave is what is gonna be what? It's going to be some function, right? So I'm going to call it fx minus vt. Y minus because it's moving to the right. You're going to get x minus vt, right? Right there. But at this point, y must be zero all time. It has to be true. This is important. It has to be that way always, but it turns out y i here, which we, uh, we're gonna call it x equals zero, which is equal to zero t is f zero minus v t, which is f of uh, minus v t, which is not zero. So it's impossible to be the only wave. It's not possible to have that wave going in. So what's going to happen? We need new wave. This wave is composed of the incident wave and the reflected wave. This is the reflected wave. And we want this whole wave to be zero right there. We want it to be zero there. So what is the reflected wave? That's the question. What is the require reflected wave so that the sum will be zero. And we want the reflected wave to be one of the solution that we have seen before. Okay, so that's the question. The answer will become clear here. Well, the only possibility is that uh, y zero t plus y r zero t must be zero, right? So y r zero t is what? Is minus f v t with a minus sign, right? From up there. So what is YR? 
that's the only question left. Well, we know why R is that. What is y r as a function of x and t? Right? This is something that um, you have to think about. With that in mind, we, we know now that that is possible. But we have already uh, given possibility of the solution propagating to the right. Right? If uh, yr is propagating to the right, it's probably already taken care of in here. So the only possibility is that yr is a wave which is propagating to the right, uh, to the left instead. This is the only possibility. There are only two possibilities. One is to the right, the other one is to the left. Okay? So the only possibility must be true. So this is equal to that, right? So G V T is minus F minus X uh, minus V T, sorry. Okay. So we know that uh, gx is equal to minus f minus x. That means that yrx plus, oh, no, no, t, not plus, sorry, is equal to what? Minus f of minus x minus vt. Done. That's the answer. This is the reflected wave. So the wave is going to look like this. When you come in, it's going to look like that. The reflected wave is going to look like the flipped version of this. But it's not flipped up and down. It's flipped left and right as well. So you flip this way and this way twice. First you flip up and down, right? And then you flip left and right. So you get that. That's the reflected wave. It looks uh, pretty much like the case we have here, except that um, in this case you have symmetry, so it's hard to see. So I pretend to write it um, in terms of a, an, a, a symmetric pulse uh, so you can see which one is front or back. It's, it's going to look like this. This is Y incident. This is Y refracted. This is for fixed end. All right. Oh, one example is easy. Um, you have a sinusoidal generator. You generate some wave here, going there. So Y incident is A sine KX minus omega T, right? So Y reflected, this is X equals zero. I think it's easier that way. It doesn't need to be zero, but it's easier to write it like that. It's going to be minus A sine minus KX minus omega T. If you sum them up, Y, maybe the sum of this, right? It's going to be sine minus sine, so it's uh, 2A. Oh, this is a plus, sorry. 2A uh, sine. Kx cosine omega t is a standing wave. So at the end, it's going to look like this. This is a wall, this is node. 
node, 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 and node, and so on. It's going to oscillate up and down around the nodes, like this and like this, and so on. Okay, I, I think you can imagine some of that. Hopefully, it's going to shake up, up, down, shake up and down, up and down, and up and down, like that. That standing wave, and the fixed end is going to become nodes. So fixed end becomes a node, which is nice. It's already fixed, right? Why not just become a node? A node is the only place where nothing oscillates. Okay, let's take a break and please try to analyze free n accordingly, like one, the one we just did with fixed n. Now it's free n. Free, what does it mean? It, it means you don't have to pay for it, not really. The free n, what does it mean? It means that uh, there is no no upward well no vertical force let's say sorry okay let's do that and we'll come back to this blue mat okay um, so so we're looking for flat at the end, which means that the partial derivative only with respect to x has to be zero. So when that happens, um, we look for something again, and we know it doesn't happen. So we want a reflected wave and the incident wave to become zero at x equals zero. Okay, what is this? Um, this is what? F prime x minus vt plus g prime x plus Vt is zero at x equals zero. Sorry, x is gone. X is gone, right? Because x is zero. This is true everywhere. That means the slope of g is the same as the slope of f at the other side, on the other side of the x-axis and then you want to probably integrate it, right? Okay, so you get what? What do you get? Yep, like here, you do partial derivative, you don't have to um, find derivative this term is zero right it's independent it doesn't depend on x so you differentiate this differentiate that you get that and then we can find g okay what, what is g so g is the integral of g x dx right true right which is equal to minus oh no uh, f prime minus x dx right which is equal to um minus 
it, it seems I have extra minus sign. I cannot. Oh, sorry. I have extra minus sign here. Sorry about that. Here, which is the same as f prime minus x d minus x. Change variables a little bit, which becomes um, f minus x plus constant, of course, which we don't care about right now. Done, right? You can see what, what I did. With that, you know the reflected wave is equal to f of minus x minus vt without the minus sign in front. So the wave is going to look like this when going in. When reflected, it's going to look like this. Up here. This is why incident, this is why reflected. So if you want to make a standard wave, it's going to um, look like this. Sorry, it's not uh, very nicely drawn, but uh, I tried. The end is going to look like this. It's going to shake. This is node, 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 anti-node, anti-node. Anti-node is when it's flat. We call it anti-node. This is an open end. If you keep vibrating it, it's going to look like that, which is hard to, to make a little bit, especially when the, the string is too, too, too heavy, a little bit too heavy. It's uh, going to be a little bit hard to, to keep going. It's going to fall, basically. In our uh, consideration, we don't care about guarantee at all. That would mean that uh, we only care about the tension. So when the tension is comparable to the weight, there's going to be some problem. Okay? You don't have to know all this. You don't have to be able to integrate it to find it mathematically. You want to, to learn at the end what's going on. That's all. Okay? I'm the one who, are supposed, I'm the one who is supposed to, to know about this because I'm teaching you. Okay, so what you're going to do is this, you're going to take 20% of what I know, of what I talk about, use it, learn some more, so you get up to 40% maybe. You take exam, and then later on in life, sometime later, you learn a little bit more, and more and more, and hopefully you're going to get up to 100% eventually, or even more. Okay, so for the exam, of course, I'm going to talk to you and, and say a lot of things. Only a few things will be tested. Not all. Okay? With two fix, N is going to oscillate like this. Not oscillate. It's going <laughs> to vibrate like this. It's going to vibrate in higher frequency. It's going to vibrate in two loops, three loops, and so on. Each one of them is have a lambda. So the formula is this. The number of loops is equal to L. So N lambda over 2 is L. So you move it around, lambda N is 2L over N. With that, it becomes V over lambda is F, right? So you get formula like that. You don't have to memorize it. You want to know only this. Not that. That could be derived eventually. Well, you, you need to know a little bit more from the other days. It's the world. You need to know a lot of things. You pretend not doing much, not thinking much, 
but in real world you can look in the YouTube you can look on Google you'll see uh, people can do var varieties of things um, you could be in the middle there are some people doing some things beyond yourself some of them are lower than yourself so it's it's um it's a lot of degrees of you know variations so you just have to be versatile you have to know a lot start with something easy get the formula plug it in get the final formula and just keep in mind that you can find it anytime okay that's that's the way to think about it okay um, or you can have other situations um, when you have a setting like this you have one case without without water one, in the other case with water so the tension here is T1 the tension here is T2 this is five loops this is two loops so lambda 1 over lambda 2 is 5 half right you know why because it's equal to what to 2 L over 2 over 2L over 5, right? So it comes to 5 half. I, I hope you can see it. This is L. This is the same L. Alright? So you get that. Um, you know the ratio with the same frequency you could multiply by the same frequency which come to V1 over V2 which is square root of T1 over T2 so T1 over T2 is 25 over 4 and then we know that T2 is T1 minus buoyancy but T1 is equal to the weight so is the density times the volume The buoyancy is the density of water times the volume. For from all this, you could find the density of the object. You know this, plug in this, you get something, the radius uh, or the radii, they cancel one another. They are all gone. Okay? You can look closely in the book. It shouldn't, shouldn't be that hard. I'm just kind of summarize it for you. Maybe it's a, a better way of thinking about it. It's shorter, it's uh, direct. It's up to you which one you want to use. Okay. Again and again. Oh, I'm, I'm just. I'm just trying to, to go through uh, some examples which could provide you with different aspects of um, applying uh, what we know, right? So each one could uh, open up um, new understanding of, of the material, hopefully. So there are going to be 
a little bit of them. Not so little. It is not formula and we finish. And of course, in this situation, you don't have a, um, an instant formula. The one you can use right away. Why? Because this is very specific situations. They don't happen often. Right? With uh, something that could come by accident or uh, any... It doesn't, it doesn't have to be accident. Uh, maybe some people are curious about this and then they try to, to make up some question that could test you on this. If you want to encounter some problems that are unknown to you, you probably have to hang, uh, have to basically kind of um, attach to some important points that um, you already know about, okay? So you can use it freely. Anyway, for air column, you could imagine uh, things like this. I, I don't see what's going on here, actually, personally, because displacement wave is actually uh, not transverse, right? This is very annoying to me. So this picture doesn't make much sense. Because we are talking about air columns, so most of the waves will be longitudinal. The, the oscillation is that way, not this way. So why just write it like that? I, I think it's just the picture. The rough picture of what's going on is not the real vibration. The real vibration happens in this direction, not this way, this way. But in any case, it's understandable. You can write it like this. This is both open ends. This is one open end and one closed end. It has to be node here because it's fixed. It has to be antinode here because it's open. Open, open nodes. Therefore, this is lambda over 4, lambda over 4. This is L, so L is this. This is lambda over 2. This picture is wrong, actually. This is lambda over 4, has to be shorter. So lambda is L. This is lambda over 4, because it's between antinodes and nodes. Well, Antinode and the node next to it, lambda over 4. This is lambda, half lambda. This is a quarter lambda. You get 3 fourth. So you get 4 third. If you flip it. Okay, the frequency is easy. Once you have lambda, divide by lambda. You get frequency. Alright, and so on. This is lambda and a quarter, so it's five fourth lambda. Okay, try that. See what's going on. And from this, calculate F is easy. So you have some kind of uh, general formulas for harmonics, beginning with the Fundamental frequency, some first harmonic, second harmonic. I'm not even sure which one is first. I, I think the fundamental frequency is the first harmonic. The second harmonic is with uh, a little bit higher frequency. The wavelength is shorter. With, with shorter wavelength, you have higher frequency. And of course, this series is going to be um, treat it separately from this series because you have one open end you have two open ends slightly different class of frequencies we talk about them in families we don't mix them okay although there are some overlaps between the frequency of this one this one this one this one of course they are not arranged in group they are kind of in between one another but it's easier to talk about a family instead of uh, 
separately. Okay, this is a class of two open ends. It's a class of one open end. Okay, we we want to talk about beats. Beating is the periodic variation of in amplitude. We we stress on amplitude, which reflects loudness. Oh no! Without an end again. I did it twice today. Too bad. Um, <laughs> I just want to get it right. Um, due to the superposition of two waves having slightly different frequency. Okay, so we gonna look at look at look at a fixed place. This fixed place is x equals zero. So the rest is gonna vibrate. You're staying there, therefore what you see is going to be oscillating. You can follow the wave, the wave will look the same. If you don't follow the wave, you remain at one place, it's going to oscillate. If you take the picture at different times, they are going to oscillate too. Okay, but for now we ignore the X part. So you get something like this and this. We combine them to get the envelope times this. Okay, actually um, this is wrong, right? It's a miss. Oh, okay. Well, it's not wrong. Actually, uh, they are both depending on frequency. But the difference in frequency is much smaller than the frequencies themselves. When that happens, this part is oscillating very slowly, changing slowly. The other part is oscillating very fast. Okay, we can picture it in terms of this. This is the maximum you can get, like the changing amplitude. The changing amplitude is affecting everyone so you're gonna plot it with a dotted line this is the envelope envelope the envelope is this part the oscillation is inside and you can see these antinodes coming twice right so twice the value of the frequency of the envelope will be this. So it's two times this, you get that. This is a formula. The beating is the difference in F in, in the frequency. Okay. Okay, let's work on a problem. I'll give you a few minutes to read it. And decide what to do with it. Maybe you can get some answers. That's great. If not, uh, hopefully by the end of this chapter you can get some time to rethink about it. To re rethink it a little bit.
Okay, two speaker, uh, same oscillator, frequency F, okay? They are located at distance D and so on. A man walks straight towards uh, towards the lower the lower speaker in the direction perpendicular to the pole. So he walks in to the right. How many times do we hear in minimum in sound intensity? How far from the pole? See. The key word is minimum. Why minimum? Because of the interference. Right? When we talk about interference, we talk about what? Delta S, right? So what you need to write down is when the man is here, he's going to hear this and he's going to hear that. This is S2, this is S1, right? Now, you, you're, you're going somewhere. Uh, when a, in some minimum, it's N lambda over 2. Right? Not really. I, it's, it's half a lambda, right? So it's, <laughs> it's what? It's N and a half, right? not n lambda over 2, just keep that in mind. Because n lambda over 2 could be an integer, an integral number of lambda. So you should have uh, that, right? Now, you can plug it in. So n plus 1 half lambda is this minus that, right? So, so what do you do? It's uh, some kind of, well, you need some number for this, right? Okay, straightforward. Okay, same height and so on. So, so let's call it x here. And this is square root of x square plus d square minus x. Something like that. Okay, that's pretty much it. So we want to see which n is possible. Okay? Let's take the extreme case. We know this is getting bigger and bigger because, um, well, we, we don't really know that, but let's Let's plug something in. For example, if x is 0, you get d, right? If x is a little bit bigger, um, I'm, I'm going to try to see uh, how, how it's going to be uh, on the right-hand side. I think it's getting bigger because um, it's not clear, right? Is it? Is it clear which one is... Oh, maybe I can do this. Uh, I can multiply up here with the same thing with a plus sign. Whatever up top is d square over this. So this thing is decreasing with x. Well, actually, I mean what I meant is that it decreases when x increases with x increasing. Uh, I n is increasing, okay? I n c, okay? Not incorporated, just increasing. So, um, 
So what? Um, you're gonna count how many n you're gonna take um, to to make this happen. So basically, you have uh, n minimum. Well, uh, I, I don't need that. Sorry, I changed my mind. So is n plus one half lambda? Uh, this is increasing, decreasing with x. So uh, the maximum is with zero x is d uh, less than uh, greater than or equal to when x is x is l. You have to count how many n's there can be. You need to know some numerical values, but that's okay. All right. Just keep plugging in some numbers and then see uh, how this is uh, going. Some few more problems. Okay, two strings vibrating at the same frequency after the tension in one of the string is decreased. The observer here four beats each, each second. So F minus 150 is four. Okay, so F prime is equal to 154 or 146 hertz. So which one? When the tension decrease, <laughs> the tension decreases, so the velocity decreases. When the velocity decreases, same frequency, that means the wavelength decreases. When the wavelength decreases, the frequency, um, well, you have more loops, basically. I, I want to determine which, which one is which. So, um, basically you have that, right? two string in vibrating string lambda is the same so the frequency is less sorry because it's uh, two string vibrating uh, same way when two string is vibrating same way lambda is fixed so frequency is less so the answer is 146 not 154 it loose uh, it's a little bit loosened so that the frequency is smaller okay you can think about some of these problems um, once again when you get home uh, try to bring it up okay discuss or maybe discuss it with your friends maybe try to analyze it uh, the chip travels along a straight line parallel to the shore at distance 600 600 meters um, from the shore this is the shore The chip radio receives a simultaneous signal of the same frequency from A and B, which is separated by a distance of 800, milli uh, 800. <laughs> 
Signal interfere constructively at C. Therefore, here, constructively at C. What does it mean? This is equal to that. At C, delta S is zero. It's constructive. We know that. Actually, we don't in this case. It's constructive when the delta S becomes zero, so that the phase diff is zero so it's in phase so the uh, signal here and here is in phase um, determine the wavelength of radio wave first minimum at D Delta S is L square plus D square minus D is the first minimum. The first minimum is zero plus a half lambda. This is first minimum. Since it's in phase, so you can discuss this. If it's out of phase, you have to add another half a lambda there. Okay, the wavelength is twice of that. So it's 100 minus that. So lambda is 800 mil, uh, meters. This is the first minimum. Okay, let's move on quickly to thermodynamics. We got to do this, otherwise um, we, uh, we won't have time in the, in the remaining lectures. So let's do that now, so we could take it easy towards the end. Okay, we're going to talk about thermodynamics. Uh, the meaning of the name is pretty, pretty clear. It's, uh, the, re the only reason for this is to getting some motion with heat. Dynamics doesn't mean motion, but uh, the name thermodynamics seems to suggest um, that uh, it's related to heat and motion. So basically, we're gonna make things move using heat by heating it up or, or maybe some complicated way, you can get something going. The only way to learn this is pretty straightforward. We start with the laws. In this chapter alone, we're gonna talk about only about temperature. It's a quick, short chapter. So um, just to remind you what's going on, we're gonna talk a little bit about matter and heat, how you understand it. You're gonna talk about gas ideal gas law, uh, mole, just only a little bit. I, I think the, uh, the rest uh, you probably could review on your own. The zeroth law is uh, here so that you could compare temperature. The way to compare temperature is, um, well, the only thing we know about, uh, about uh, temperature is um, temperature is something that if we have the same, that would mean that it, uh, we won't make exchange in terms of heat and stuff, no energy between A and B, that means it's in, equal, in equilibrium. 
in thermal equilibrium so there is no heat exchange when that is true we say the temperature is the same and hopefully we can uh, maybe go back a little bit to understand how we obtain these numbers you know temperature in degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit in Kelvin the Sirach law say something like when A and B are separately in thermal equilibrium with C then A and B is in equilibrium as well so basically A and C is okay plus B and C is okay therefore A and B must be okay too in equilibrium I mean which is not uh, very it's not something to to overlook suppose that we have everyone in one single room we can compare temperature after some time it can be true that uh, there are people who we cannot bring here and compare so we let the third guy see compare them if the C say yes for both that would mean that the, the two guys must have the same heat level the same temperature which is understandable because C is more available C could go anywhere right if C could go anywhere we don't have to compare A and B we just compare C with the rest if say, uh, C says the same that would mean we have um, we could enjoy equilibrium between A and B as well that's it that's, that's how we have zero law it's zero law because it's very basic we don't use it very often it's just some kind of um, underlying principle we need to say it uh, whatever is needed we need to say it um, in straightforward form okay heat capacity C is defined as amount of energy need to raise the temperature of that sample by one degree Celsius okay so it's gonna take some heat it's gonna take some heat to to make something hotter that amount of heat per degree Celsius is called heat capacity uh, we can talk about specific heat capacity in many books they could call it specific heat capacity but you can call it specific heat just that it's the heat per degree Celsius per amount of substance just put some extra terms specific means per mass or per mole per quantity okay so it's MC delta T again right you've seen that um, there's some problem here uh, I don't agree with that maybe I'm wrong hopefully I'm right but maybe I'm wrong the heat here the heat capacity is, a, is defined as the amount of heat if you want to say it right you should say it heat um, heat is something that occurs and gone energy is something that you can keep heat you cannot keep let's uh, assume that this room is uh, insulated 
That don't mean that he could not escape or come in this room. Doesn't mean that um, the energy cannot escape. But every time you lose heat, you have less energy because heat will go from higher energy to lower energy. Okay, it it just the way to think about that. Uh, heat makes you hotter. When you are hot, you have more energy. But heat and energy, they are different things. Okay, um, because heat is complicated. It's a bit more complicated and very. Uh, it's kind of independent people, <laughs> basically. We cannot control heat. We can let it flow. We can pre-design it. We can design it to work the way we want it to work. But we cannot force it. But energy, if you want more energy, you put in heat. If you want less energy, you bring someone to take away some heat. That's what you can do. Energy is like money. But spending money is not money. We, we are not even sure what it is. Um, the action of having a buying power. You can buy something. That means you have money. Not really. It's it just the power of buying something is not the same as the money. Money is a, a material thing, right? Money, by law, you can exchange it with some goods. Money is like energy. But heat is parallel to energy. But having money, it means that you can spend it on something. You can pay someone. But paying is not money. But having money, you can pay. Having a lot of energy, you can give heat. Having less energy, you cannot give heat. If you have money, you have a lot of money, you can buy a lot of things. But money is not something that is something that you keep as a symbol of, uh, of that, but it doesn't mean, well, well, let's say if I have some money buried somewhere in my backyard, I cannot remember where it is. Does it mean you have buying power? Of course not. I don't, I cannot find my money. <laughs> I lost my money in my home or in uh, some other place, doesn't matter. That means I don't have the buying power anymore. Just like people who have lower energy, they cannot give energy away in terms of heat. Okay? But uh, for some people who uh, don't want to spend money, they still have those people, they still have buying power. They can buy things anytime they want. But as long as the money is with them, if they have money with them, they don't buy. They, they don't have buying power. Buying power happens when you are at the store and buy something. We're not talking about economics. I'm just comparing it. Having money in your place in your hand, you have money. You hold on to your money. You hold on your energy. You don't have heat. But if you want to give energy to someone, you give it in terms of heat. It's going to go into their account. <laughs> and people are going to say, you have more energy now. Because some other people, they just gave you some heat. 
So it's uh, slightly different, but I think it's important. In, in terms of physics, it's very important because energy is not the same as heat. Never. Never the same. But they are pretty much uh, kind of the same kind of things. They are similar. We can have thermal expansion when we uh, heat up things. It turns out they um, will have strain, more strain. And it turns out if you have more material, you can stretch it more. So it inversely proportional to the length. So if you move things around, you get this. This is a coefficient of linear expansion. This is called thermal expansion by heat alone. Uh, usually the temperature is in Kelvin or in degrees Celsius. Okay, if we have something that could expand in three dimension, we talk about volume expansion. We could have L, W, and H So they all could expand, when you expand it, each of them, according to this rule, you get this, which is approximately that. This is small. So the coefficient expansion of volume expansion is three times the linear expansion approximately because you can write delta V over V over delta T is 3 lambda from this expression alone right oh and we have ideal gas law PV is NRT I probably can can prove this as well um, let's try some of that uh, we know we have like Charles law Charles law V is proportional to T we're gonna talk about this a little bit more next okay V is proportional to T we have Boyle's law Boyle's law, P is proportional to 1 over V when P is fixed. When T is fixed, when temperature is fixed. So we will combine them. We're going to get like V is proportional to T over P. When combine them, you get that. So PV is proportional to T, right? What about N? What is the number of moles has something to do with this? I bring this. I have a box of things. It's P and V and T, right? I have another box of things. I bring it together. Combine them and open Break this down, break it, cut it open, combine them. Now P, V is not proportional to T anymore, right? Because you have twice of that, because it's 2V. Now, so this rule is not true, so it must be what? It must be... Uh, proportional to something that uh, kind of tells you how many of material how much material you have here and here so we're gonna say well it's proportional to V over the number of molecules or particles that is proportional to T 
The constant of proportionality is called Boltzmann constant here. And we are still crazy about this. We have PV, we have N, we're going to divide by Avogadro's number. The Avogadro's number is going to come up here times KB times T. It's going to give you what? The gas constant R. And this thing we're going to call it mole. Number of moles. So it's PV, it's NRT, it's NKBT. You have to know that. Well, we use it once in a while, but um, knowing it is not uh, so difficult. Just memorize it. Um, you could always uh, flip it, for example, well, you have to know P is NRT over V and so on, right? So you could, uh, you know, anytime you want to look for uh, some expression that you could use, you could go to this. All right? Uh, You can talk about uh, heat and first law of thermodynamics. Sorry about that. It's uh, kind of overlap. They kind of block each other's way a little bit, but it's not uh, so bad. I, I think they're oh, they're all gone. Sorry, maybe I did something wrong. Sorry about that. Um, it, this one shouldn't be here, but. Anyway, we can talk about this. Um, the work done by outside DW is the force. The force is PA, right? Pressure times area times the displacement dy, which is equal to P times A dy. We're going to call this the change in volume, P dV. This is a work from outside, external or outside work. Okay? So you have new expression. W is integral PDV. I actually missed uh, quite a few pages. Um, yeah. Oh, it's here. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. So we, we talk about this first. Um, we could heat up uh, using this principle Q is MC delta T which looks pretty much like the other page. We can have latent heat when it, uh, it's uh, heat is used, well heat involved the change changes in phase so either it could be from solid to liquid or from liquid to solid or into gas if it involves this is gonna uh, the temperature is going to be held constant. Okay? The priority is to change phase. Temperature is not change. We don't know why, but this is a thing that happens. When you are boiling water, the temperature will be fixed until you reach the point where there is no remaining water, only the steam. Once you have steam, the temperature could increase again. Okay? It, it always happens like that. So you start with ice at 30 degrees below. It's going to warm up. We don't know why. We get no water here. We have no water here until the temperature is zero. The whole thing. Oh, we have to keep it uh, in equilibrium, okay? You have to stir it. And then it's going to start melting. 
this is melting and then it's gonna heat up water is gonna heat up it's gonna go boiling at 100 degrees and 0 degrees Celsius oh you should be able to convert between them okay like you can try uh, calculate uh, like this uh, what mass of this uh, need to warm this and that right so you start with something like what delta Q given is delta Q taken right it has to come from somewhere to give it somewhere the delta Q is given is what 130 degrees so oh, it's is what M of the stream C of the stream times 30 degrees right the steam is gonna come to 100 degrees now right we want to warm water so finally it has to fuse so it's ms times l of fusion of water and then the water is gonna cool down the stream the steam is gonna cool down right so it's gonna be 100 celsius minus the final temperature that is given is gonna be equal to taking 200 grams of water and glass container so m of water c times uh, 30 degrees plus m of glass times c of glass sorry this is water this is steam this is 30 degrees given and taken done okay just plug in some numbers from up here shouldn't be too hard oh the final temperature is 50 degrees sorry I don't need uh, that mysterious <laughs> variables I don't need it there okay and we we talk about this quickly before we could write expression for work in terms of this since uh, the pressure the force due to pressure is always perpendicular to the cylinder anywhere so we have expression which is look which look like a scalar expression which is nice and the area under the curve automatically this is pressure this is P times delta V so this is work the area under the curve is work but if you go in the opposite direction it's gonna be negative work or positive work depending on how you look at it Okay, you have to look at it closely if we talk about the work from outside or inside if the work of the gas you have to expand to get positive work if the work if it's the work from outside you have to contract to get a positive work you have to compress it okay so it depends on which direction as well you have to look with the positive with a negative number it means the work of the system internal or system the internal if you expand uh, the work will, oh sorry external not internal I was wrong I didn't uh, pay attention so it's from outside the work of the outside is negative when the pressure is bigger this area under the curve and stuff again okay the work done is the area under the curve quasi static means that you have to keep it um, all uniform you have to stir it keep it in equilibrium at all times and we want finally to talk about the first law of thermodynamics which continues next time 
um, the first law says something like if you want to change your energy you need to do some work other than that you need heat so it's gonna sound very creepy a little bit it's like when um, at night sometime it's cold and windy we see something flying around which is uh, a little bit unnatural we say well it's is uh, some phenomenon unknown phenomenon we could call it ghost we can call it superstition we could call it mystery in in physics if you work on a system and its energy is not the same as the work you put in we call the rest of the energy we call it heat so this is good I sit on a car and the car could move very fast I'm only sitting I don't have to do a lot of work but I use heat instead to give it more energy here and there I actually is not energy in this form but uh, we could call, talk about work done and stuff like that next right so so it's a nice thing that you can you can have no energy you can spend nothing and you get some work done with with heat but it turns out there is some limits to that which we're gonna talk about in a few lectures okay so we'll come back to this uh, next time try to finish it Please read the remaining chapters and uh, I'll see you next time.